So this video, we're going to cover the law of sines and the law of cosines and how to identify them. Now, if you have a right triangle, you don't even have to worry about the law of sines or cosines because you can use right triangle trigonometry, concepts such as sine, cosine, and tangent relationships to theta or the angle that you're choosing, or the Pythagorean theorem if you're trying to find a missing third side and if you're given two of the sides of the right triangle. So what we want to do is we want to classify the law of sines and law of cosines by angles and sides. If you are given the two angles and a side that is not between the two angles, you can easily find the third angle and use a relationship for the law of sines. If you have the side between the two angles, that also works too, because you can find the third angle very easily from two angles and then use the law of sines. If you are given two sides and then an angle, well, you can use the law of sines. It's a little trickier though, because sometimes you might have one possible solution, two possible solutions, or maybe they'll be a little tricky and give you a problem that's impossible to solve. But these are the three combinations that you would use the law of sines. The law of cosines would be for a situation when you have a side, an angle, and a side, and the angles between the two sides, so the law of sines would be impossible to use. Also, the law of sines is impossible with three sides because you can't actually have two unknown angles with the law of sines with one equation. So what this means is that this three-letter characteristic will get you to figuring out which one you'll use for which problem. Now I've made many videos going over the how to solve for the law of sines and law of cosines, so I will not be actually solving these problems in this video. I'm just going to go through triangle identification. So in this situation, we have no picture so we're just going to draw our triangle with angles A, B, and C and their corresponding sides across from them. So in this case, we know that this angle is 50 degrees, this angle is 55 degrees, and this C is equal to 9. So that would be here. So now I can figure out which three letter combo this is. Looks like this is an angle and an angle. So I got two angles here. So that is going to give me into one of these two combinations, either angle, angle, side, or angle, side, angle. But since the side is directly between the two angles, this is angle, side, angle, and I would use the law of sines. If I was to solve this problem, I would get angle C, which is 75 degrees, and then use the law of sines to figure out side A and side B, which is 7.14 and 7.63 respectively. In the next example, I have a side that is 14 and that is going to be side A across from angle A which is 85 degrees. Angle B which I don't know has a side corresponding to it which is 7 and that's all I know. So here I have two angles and I have a side. Or excuse me, here I have two sides and I have an angle. Notice where the angle is. The angle is not between the two sides in this bottom corner where C is. So since this is the case, I have the side-side angle problem, and this would give me the law of sines technique. Now for this problem, if I was to solve it, the first thing I would do is I would figure out maybe a missing uh, side, so to speak, um, or sorry, missing angle. Let's maybe find angle B, which is 29.9 degrees. I would then check to see if there was a second um, answer for that, so subtracting it from 180 degrees and finding out that that would be too big with the 85 degrees. I would just be left with angle B of 29.9 degrees, angle C, which is 65.1 degrees, and then I can use the law of sines again to find side C, which is 12.75 units long. On to problem three. Here I have another ABC triangle. Here's side A. Because in a test, the reason why I'm not doing any specific or precise measurement here is you're probably not going to have time to do this 
on a standardized test or during an exam to get everything accurate. You just have to find the answers using the techniques you've learned. So side A is across from angle A. Side B is, or angle B is given, but the side is not given. And side C is given, but angle C is not. So this is an example of side, side with the angle between them. So side angle side is the law of cosines. Whoops, I wrote Lou. Ah, law of cosines. So with that in mind, the side angle side situation is going to give us um, the missing side first. That's the first thing you would try to find. You would find um, this missing side and that side is going to be, excuse me, just got to find where I am here. Um, missing side B is going to be 4.25 units in length. And then I would be very careful. I don't like actually using the law of sines. I would use the law of cosines again to find angle A, which is 50.5. And then I could subtract from 180 the 50.5 and the 55 to get angle C, which is 74.5. On to the fourth example. So here I have angle A given to me, 65 degrees. Angle B is given to me as well, 72 degrees. So it looks like I'm going to have some angle angle, but where's the side that's given? Well, it looks like um, the side is over here for side B, since we don't actually know um, uh, side C here. So now this gives me the angle, angle, side, which is the law of sines. And the first thing I'd find is angle C at 43 degrees. And then I would use the law of sines um, to figure out, oh, to find this angle, you just subtract the other two from 180. And then you would uh, use the law of sines to figure out, uh, let's say, side A, which would be 6.67 units in length, and use the law of sines again to find uh, the other missing length here, length C at 5.02. Okay, so for our final example, and you can, what's nice, you can kind of use process of elimination to figure this one out here. Here I have uh, across from angle A, side A, which is 10. Across from angle B, uh, side B, which is 10, and across from angle C, side C, which is 15, and this is the side, side, side. And what's nice about this is that if I use the law of cosines to figure out angle A, which happens to be in this case 41.4, that's going to be the same measurement as angle B. So that's great because now you have these two done because this is an isosceles triangle. And isosceles triangles have two congruent sides and also congruent angles. And that also means that we can find this third angle here, this angle C. I'm going to put two uh, marks on it to show that it is a different length than these two. And that's 97.2 degrees when you subtract your 41.4 angles away from your 180. So what's important about this part of the homework is that you have to be able to identify without given any prior information what to use, whether it's the law of sines or law of cosines. And it really all comes down to the three letter, letter triangle identifications. And if you're curious why angle, angle, angle isn't part of these, um, it's because that if I give you three angles of a triangle, you could come up with an infinite set of uh, triangles that would actually fit those three angles. So angle, angle, angle works okay for similarity, but not for um, congruence or trying to figure out missing um, sides. So thank you for watching. Hopefully uh, this and the previous videos have helped you kind of sort out when to use the law of sines and law of cosines and how to use them wisely.